Oh, hey, everybody. I had a few minutes, so I figured uh, I'd give you guys a look at my setup. You may have seen a few pictures or whatever in my blog posts, but I haven't really got a chance to go through everything and talk about it. So, uh, here you can see the back end of my trailer. It's a easy hauler, easy hauler, made by Mission Trailers, and it's one of their Duralite models. It's an aluminum frame, aluminum skin trailer. It's the 6x12 model. And I've kind of made it my own. <laughs> I was going on the my Moab trip last year in 2015 and I was really wondering what I could use to haul the bikes and make myself more comfortable and so I was looking at traditional toy haulers and things like that uh, camper for my truck and different options I have been looking I continue to look because things change situations change but anyway um, this is what I came up with an enclosed cargo trailer to tow behind my truck which I've had for years and you know prices being what they are I try to go cheap and anyway, so I'll uh, take you through my trailer and just show you some of the stuff, uh, how I've improved it and whatnot. Uh, here's the entryway here, and we look uh, up there, and I simply installed a cabinet, got a Home Depot for like $99, and it just gives me a place to store food and um, dishes and whatever else. And you can see I have a bunch of crap stuff on top of it as well. It gives me a little room there. Now underneath, this is a improvement I just made before this trip. I found these little paper plate and paper bowl holders made by Camco. They were like six bucks a piece of Amazon. So pretty good deal really. Um, a space saver. This kind of stuff small space living you're looking for ways to improve those efficiencies so this is uh, one of the things I, I came up with and uh, it's really been awesome it, you basically unsnap those and load them from the top and then um, when you want one you just pull one from the bottom but otherwise they stay um, they've stayed put the whole trip so I'd say they've worked great for me um, and I uh, have a paint roll of paper towel holders underneath there as well and then in the back you can see I have a solo cup dispenser so I thought those Camco things were so cool for plates and bowls but I couldn't for the life of me find anything where there's a commercially available solo cup dispenser so um, basically I made my own I like the idea of um, the plate and bowl holder so much that in the space savings that I carry solo cups anyway but I would carry them in one of my Rubbermaid totes or whatever and now um, I can load like 20 cups in that dispenser I made which is basically an old vitamin or protein powder um, container that I did some cutting and configuring and gluing and whatever so the top is just screwed into the bottom of the cabinetry and I just unscrew the bottom part and load it and then screw it back on and uh, 
the cups hold firm and you just give it a good yank and it comes out. Otherwise, uh, they stay put. It's great. You can see I've done a couple of little improvements with um, just organization. Made myself out of the same kind of little container, a little tub that um, fits my Clorox wipes. I like having those as well, just in case you run out of water or you don't want to run the water um, or you want to disinfect, you can grab one of those. Also have a little bathroom vanity cabinet thing, also from Home Depot. That was like thirty dollars, but um, it fits in there great, and it holds the kinds of things I need. Uh, let's have a little towel that will air dry, you know, after I wash my hands and stuff. And speaking of wash my hands. Probably noticed the table right away. So I saw one of these in a store, and I looked online, and um, they sell them in a lot of places. But basically, what it is is a fish cleaning table. So you can find them at outdoor type stores, Cabela's, Sportsman's Guide, kind of thing. But anyway, for me, it's great. It's like bar height. And it's got, it's plastic, and it's got these little um, catches, so if you spill liquids or anything, they don't run off, they get caught in these, and then you can um, funnel them towards the sink, and so there's just a little shallow basin sink built in, and it actually came with the little faucet and a drain tube and it's meant to um, be hooked up to a garden hose is the way they kind of advertise it so the plumbing fittings for that came with it um, that's not really how I was gonna roll but um, those come with it if that's something you're interested in it was approximately $75 for that table and it's just you know folding table and for me it works great and the other part about it is that it is a folding table so uh, I've tried to make the trailer work for me most of the time I'm gonna use it and then since it is a cargo trailer and it possibly has multiple uses I want to be easily ready for those so you know you can um, undo the table and take it out in um, a short amount of time. But for now, uh, what I do is I just carry a jug of water. And you can see I have both the bikes loaded in here. The Yamaha TW200 for my dual sport and dirt riding. And my Honda CB500F which is my street bike so you can see they fit in there side by side without touching so it's quite nice and you also notice one thing I did is I put this uh, clothes bar up in between and now I'm a short little dude so I actually fit under that clothes bar without ducking so I don't need to worry about hitting my head but it uh, is great for me because I can hang um, my coats and shirts and riding gear and all that kind of stuff and if it's in the way on one side I just um, can slide it over to the other side Also it gives me room to do stuff like hanging my towel and little washcloth thing um, after I take showers and things like that. So you see down here 
I have one of these 15 gallon blue water containers and I have a anchor point on each side and then I just run a strap around it uh, to make sure it won't go anywhere and then what I did is in the small bung hole I drilled that out put a piece of PEX piping in use the appropriate connectors the this flex line so that goes the PEX goes all the way down with an angled cut so it gets to the bottom of that tank and then I just plumbed it in put a little inline filter in used a little 12 volt C-Flow pump that was only like $25 on Amazon a little clear tubing in between another piece of braided line that connects there and then to the bottom of the faucet part and then I ran the 12 volt DC wiring just down through drill a small hole in the floor of the trailer and then I run it out to the truck where I keep my battery bank and then I connect it there with a SAE plug and then that's how I control whether or not I have power so it works good it's uh, kind of a not loud obnoxious pump and it's out in the open so it's not like un deep underneath in an RV where you're not gonna hear it but all I use it for is washing dishes or washing my hands so it works just fine for me and then secondarily I got this siphon pump that I put in the larger side bunghole of this tank so if I want to fill a larger jug or something I don't have to run the pump itself and be all noisy the accordion style tube and then you just pump this and it's an airflow relief so when it's closed you just pump it like half a dozen times it'll start the water flow and then it will siphon pump out of the tank and then you open the air relief and it breaks the siphon and then you just have to worry about the water that's left in the tube um, getting back out so anyway overall that setup works pretty good for me I filled it up early on in my trip um, and I have no idea how much water is in there but I imagine it is still quite a bit because I use it sparingly like I said I really only use it to wash hands and dishes and stuff and so one way I know and I can kind of keep track of how much water I've used without opening one of the bung holes on the tank and looking in there is by the gray water so the sink goes down and then it's just got this accordion style drain tube and I just have it going into a couple or a gray tank and when I say gray tank they're because they're literally gray I found water containers in the camping section of a of a sporting goods store and I bought two of them they're approximately five gallons each and it just makes it convenient for me I run when I'm dry camping depending on the regulations you know some people just drill a hole in the floor or whatever and let your gray water just drain out but um, you never know what the regulations are going to be where where you're going to be so I prefer just to let it drain into a gray tank and then I can either switch them out for a total of 10 gallons of gray water or if I'm in an area where I feel comfortable just dumping it outside I um, can just you know, pick it up get an idea how full it is if it's getting full I go dump it so you also notice under my table I use 
a Coleman Extreme ice chest for my cooler. And uh, this is, you know, an item I already had. It was, you know, like a fish cooler for me. And so you can obviously go with that size or a little bit bigger or smaller or whatever you wanted to do. But for me, it works great and it's nice and out of the way, tucked up under the table. It actually gives me uh, an extra platform to set things. And it has the cup holders. So this front area is really just a small living space for me as well because um, it gives me shelter and stuff when I am done with my riding or whatever activities for the day I can come in the trailer and stay out of the wind or out of the rain or whatever weather it might be and I can just hang out and do stuff I can eat make dinner um, use my tablet or my laptop and just uh, watch movies or play on the computer or the internet or whatever it might be but um, it's not a ton of space but right now it's just me so um, I can uh, gives me plenty of space to put out a lawn chair and use the tables table and the ice chest as a place to set things Over here you can see I just have an old crappy roll away tool box strapped to the wall over here. Uh, hope to improve on that in the near future. You can see the bottom drawer is kind of, kind of busted out on me this year. But so far so good. Uh, as far as lighting goes, um, I got these off Amazon too. This is what I use for lights. They're just uh, they run off four double A's and I really really like things that run off double A's they are readily available and you can um, find them all over and you can buy them in bulk for fairly cheap so you can see here the back air plate just gets screwed into the wall and just find the grooves and that sits there so what's cool about these lights are um, number one they're just LEDs number two I like the little brushed finish on the light number three they're a motion sensor it's actually got a three position switch under here off on and auto so off obviously is off on puts it in a, a constant on mode also there's two small LEDs that point down and then an auto, it um, works off the motion sensor. So uh, it works with two ways. Number one, if there is already enough light, it senses that and it won't come on. That's why it's not on now. However, you know, at nighttime or if the doors were shut on the trailer, it would know that the light is low and when the motion sensor is activated, it would turn the light on. And then it keeps the light on until it stop seeing motion um, sometimes I can be in here and if I'm holding still for a few minutes they'll go on and off and then flicker and whatever and it's kind of annoying but that's why I like the three position switch if I know I'm gonna be in here for a while I'll just turn the switch to the on position on a few of the lights and that way I'll have adequate lighting while I'm in the trailer and then I just have to remember to switch it back to auto as I'm leaving and sometimes I forget and the lights will stay on for a really long time and then you can tell when they're dimming but that's the great thing again it's just double a batteries so when i do that and i do it a, a couple times a trip um i'll just change out the batteries and so i get good lights again so you can see i got one there the entry one there one there above the sink and then two more in the back, one on each side. Uh, 
on the back side of this wall by the door. You can see I have a few housekeeping items, a broom. I also have a mop that I keep next to it, a fire extinguisher, first aid kit, and then I made myself a couple little holders for wheel chocks. Um, and I just have a garbage can which is screwed to the floor and is uh, foot activated. So that's nice, it doesn't move. So last but not least is the porta potty. And how great are these? It is so awesome having your own private bathroom area when you're off on an adventure camping and whatever. So for me, um, I picked up this Thetford Porta Potty Curve is the name of it. And uh, a couple real quick things about it. The reason I picked this one is number one, it's uh, tall. It's about norm. It's like normal bathroom toilet height and shape as well. It's um, Obviously, it's not as big as your normal elongated bowl toilet is, but it's um, it's nice as far as that goes. I mean, some of them are very compact and very uncomfortable to use. So the height of this one and, again, the, the um, bowl shape is nice. And so a couple of features about that is, um, number one, the height. You get part of the height from the tank, the black water tank which is underneath and a bigger tank under there which helps raise up the seat height is also um, gives you extra room for your waste so this is about five gallons of waste that you can have before you need to dump and then because it's a porta potty it's a cassette style um, so it's very easy to do and it's not messy really at all um, so as far as that goes, it hasn't been any trouble at all. But a couple of things about this as well. So you can see down there by the handle, right here there's a little window. And it's a little gauge. There's a little float in the waste tank. So um, right now it's green. You can see I emptied it recently. And so it is basically a, a roll. A wheel inside there and then as the float moves up it spins the wheel and so on the back side it has red and so as it gets more full it'll progressively get more red and then obviously when it's red and you can also see by the inside how close you are to the valve um, stopper that that you need to dump so anyway that's a nice feature it's a nice little visual too um, to help help you know when you're close. <clears throat> so also it has this uh, little access door here which right here is your fresh water fill for flushing and then again another gauge and that is also a float for telling you how full your fresh water area is and then here is a flusher actually so when I open the lid, you can actually see it's an elongated bowl um, and not terrible in size. So, in order to flush, you pull this handle here, opens the door. I'm not going to open it so you can see down in there, it'll gross you out. But um, the thing that's nice about this is it's, again, got a little pump operated off AA batteries so when you are done you push the button and it flushes and uh, my water is a little bit pink right now just because I winterized it and put some uh, RV antifreeze in the tank with the pump uh, over the winter just so to make sure I wouldn't have any problems
Uh, another feature for me that I did was I purchased the extra mounting plate. And so what's nice is the porta potty is screwed down. Really, there's a mounting plate that gets screwed to the trailer floor, and then the whole unit itself locks into that mounting plate. And so it's not going to go anywhere and then when you want to dump or you want to like I said just move it really fast let's say I needed a haul furniture or help somebody move with the trailer and please don't ask me to help you move I that, that's not why I bought my trailer but anyway it's very quickly um, able to to do that and it's a really nice feature the porta potty itself was approximately 110 to 120 dollars off Amazon. The separate mounting plate was like 25 dollars. And um, anyway, I highly recommend it. It's been a good model. A little bit about the trailer and how I got my bikes in here. Um, some of the modifications I made were number one to the floor itself. Um, one of the reasons I picked this trailer and I liked um, what it had going for it was they build this with a high quality um, OSB style decking and walls. It's, um, I can't remember the trademark name of it now, but it's um, supposed to be very highly highly moisture resistant and then the deck itself is 5 8 and the walls are I can't remember if they're 3 8 or half inch um, but I liked that the floor and the walls were made of that material and then also the ceiling is lined with a thin quarter inch style uh, coated stuff it's a vinyl coated and then with the trim package um, the crown molding kind of stuff um, it really makes it look nice now when I bought the trailer though the wood was uncoated untreated so um, I took it upon myself to paint the inside of the walls and I painted them bright white and that was so obviously I could help with the lighting situation inside of an enclosed trailer that you plan to spend time in you want light when you need it so to help with the lighting situation I painted the walls white and I used a porch paint uh, I believe it was a bare porch paint from Home Depot um, which actually got pretty good reviews. Bear itself is sometimes uh, iffy, uh, I understand, but um, you know, it's fine. And it's already gotten scuffed up and whatever, and that's fine. I don't really care. I'll recode it every couple of years or whatever. Um, but ultimately, I think it's done its job very well. You can see with the doors open, it's, it's really bright in here. The, the lights, like I said, uh, won't even come on because it's adequately lit inside of here that with the ceiling liner um, being white as well and the cabinetry and stuff so that uh, was an improvement and then for the floor um, what I did was I got some of the garage floor style um, roll-on epoxy which this is a polycuramine solution and it uh, is a, a gray silver tint and you know it was meant for concrete and it was meant to go over a concrete floor even though it is okay to put over wood um, the mixture I used was a little light. I probably could have gone um, with a, a different 
mix or to make it a solid color. Um, this stuff was supposed to, you know, look all, you know, swirly and metallic on a, on a concrete garage floor. Uh, I still think it does the job. My whole thing with, with it was I wanted a durable surface as this trailer is kind of like my rolling garage um, for the bikes and uh, for, you know, you'd have oil dripping and lubricants and things and dirt and dust and grease and grime and whatever else. So I just wanted a nice durable surface that I can roll the bikes on, that can, you know, handle the fluids and stuff and not um, absorb say gasoline and oil and things like that like a untreated floor would and so anyway that's what I end up using and uh, I, I'm pretty happy with it uh, the silver gray color kind of matches the color scheme outside is obviously a two-tone white and charcoal gray which matches my truck which is charcoal gray so I also put a little bit of anti-slip uh, silica broadcast on top before it was dry and um, that that's nice it's uh, obviously helps with uh, anti-slip it also helps for me um, with the bikes as I strap them down the nothing's nothing's ever moved in here which is great so that brings me to kind of my tie downs so what I did is uh, in the middle right in the middle of the trailer I put in these two countersinking anchor points there's one there and then one in the back sorry the lighting is maybe makes that hard to see but um, anyway I made a uh, the cutout for that and then it's uh, screwed down in the four corners and I put you know bigger washers on the bottom side and they haven't pulled out yet so that's been great in the back here I just want to show you the tie downs again there's the one in the rear the center one so uh, I chose the flush mount so when I don't have bikes in here that ring is spring loaded just to go down to the floor and then it's uh, pretty flush and then in the four corners on the sides what I did was I basically used L-Track connectors and if you know what that is it's like the stuff they basically use to hold down airplane seats it's a track made out of aluminum with a bunch of little spots in it so it offers a ton of adjustability for certain things and I bought some e-track or L excuse me L-track uh, thinking I would use it in this trailer for a lot of different tie down situations but um, I never ended up installing it but when I did order that stuff I also ordered single uh, connecting points and so that's what I used on the four corners so that's actually worked great and those are removable and if I ever wanted to but they're so close to the wall and in the corner here that it's out of the way so it doesn't bother anything what I did do is I put a lot of little D-rings all over the trailer to uh, be able to strap and hold stuff like I don't know if you could tell the lighting there but that's I got a second folding table like a $30 folding table from Home Depot that I usually just get out and put outside for cooking and whatever else but I did that on both sides of the trailer so I can put things kind of up against the wall like gas cans and whatever else and just use those anchor points for a strap around everything and then ratchet strap them tight against the wall so they don't move Anyway, you can kind of see there's you know quite a bit of room in here, and the ramp door you can see is also coated with uh, polycuramine. And then 
it is spring assisted up top there and you can see the cable attachment so really I could just flick that with my foot and it will roll up so the door is not heavy at all and it's a good uh, height and angle for the bikes um, sometimes people even put a little uh, extra flap of some sort on the end of the ramp to help roll stuff on but um, I haven't needed to do that I just give it an extra little heave and it, um, the bikes go up there so